Good morning. I'm Dr. David Richardson. I'm a cataract and glaucoma surgeon in Southern California. During my morning commutes, I like to discuss topics that generally there's just not enough time to thoroughly discuss in a typical exam room situation. Today, I'd like to discuss a class of glaucoma medications that's a particularly important class called the prostaglandin analogs. So let's go. Now, the prostaglandin analog class has been around for about 20 years. And after approval by the FDA, it rapidly became one of the most prescribed drops in the world. The reason for that is uh, primarily that it just works so incredibly well. Now, this class of medications, like many of the other classes, works at the ciliary body, but it does so using a completely different mechanism. Whereas most medications that work at the ciliary body do so by decreasing the amount of fluid that's produced in the eye, the prostaglandin analogs actually work by opening up, in a sense, a pathway called the uveoscleral pathway uh, to allow fluid to exit the eye. Now, this is not the pathway that is the primary pathway that is problematic in glaucoma. That would be the uh, conventional pathway that uses the trachea mesh work and Schlem's canal. So the prostaglandin analogs do not work that way. The, the best way to really think about it is think of this class as kind of ways for the eye. Just as if you use ways to help you with your morning commute, as I do, uh, it will reroute you around the freeway when the freeway gets congested. So it takes you along side streets that are less often used, but when there's congestion on the freeway, those side streets tend to actually be the faster way to wherever you need to go. So the prostaglandin analogs are essentially like ways, but in addition to just rerouting you, it's actually adding extra lanes to those side streets. So by opening up, this accessory pathway and making this pathway far more effective, uh, it, uh, it lowers the pressure significantly. Now, the initial prostaglandin analog that was approved for use in the United States was Latanoprost, which goes by the brand name Zalatan. Uh, it's actually been a while since I prescribed it by brand. Generally, it's Latanoprost, it's the uh, affordable generic version. Uh, and the interesting thing about generic latanoprost uh, is that it actually works about as well as the brands. So this is one of those generics where you really can feel that you're getting a good value in the generic. Now, other brand names include uh, Travitan, Travitan Z, we'll talk about that in a moment, uh, Lumigan, and uh, Zyoptan. So of those brands, Lumigan tends to be the most effective, but also has uh, some of the most bothersome side effects. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Travitan Z is interesting because rather than using benzalkonium chloride or BAC, which is the typical preservative used in glaucoma eye drops, and I'll talk about that uh, in more detail in another video, uh, Travitan Z uses a preservative called Sofsia, which is a, a kind of disappearing preservative. When the preservative hits the surface of the eye, it interacts with certain molecules in the tear film, which inactivates it. So essentially the preservative works while it's in the bottle and then when it encounters the surface of the eye, it disappears. So in theory, there should be fewer problems in terms of uh, ocular surface related issues from the preservative in those who take Travitan Z. Uh, Zyoptan is interesting because Zyoptan is truly a preservative free version of prostaglandin analogs and as such that's the one that I tend to prefer for my patients who have insurance coverage that, uh, that will make it affordable. For those who don't have good insurance coverage, the preservative freeze out and can be rather prohibitive in its in its pricing. Uh, now, as those who take glaucoma drops know, uh, each class of medications uh, tends to have a certain cap color. The cap color for the prostaglandin analogs is teal. Right. 
Now, in terms of how it's prescribed, uh, this is the other reason why this is such a popular class of medications, is it's prescribed once daily, and it tends to be prescribed at night, although it can be used any time during the day. The reason why it tends to be prescribed at night is that one of the side effects is hyperemia, which just means that the eyes get red. And if it's taken at night, then uh, you've got most of the night for that side effect to essentially disappear, making this more tolerable but you can take it any time during the day. Now here's the other interesting thing about this class of medications. Whereas with most medications, the issue is not being able to take it enough times a day. So for example, some of the other classes, the alpha agonist class, bromonidine, uh, and the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor class of topical medications, which is, includes uh, dorzolamide and brenzolamide, those actually work best three times a day, but it's hard to get them in more than twice a day. Well, with the prostaglandin analog class, this class actually works less well the more frequently you take it. So if you take it twice a day instead of once a day, you'll actually get less of a benefit. Uh, indeed, when the prostaglandin analogs were first approved, uh, there were those out there who said this is uh, really hard to believe because it was almost homeopathic doses of the prostaglandin analogs that were being used. Now, in terms of how they work with other drops, the prostaglandins do seem to be additive in that when you add another class of medications, uh, you do get an additional effect. And this we believe is largely due to the completely separate mechanism of action. We spoke about cost just briefly uh, and the benefits of the generic version. Uh, side effects. I go into detail about the side effects, the cosmetic side effects, uh, in another video. Uh, briefly, long lash growth, iris color change, uh, skin pigmentation, a decrease in the amount of connective tissue around the eyes. Those are the most common cosmetic uh, side effects. There are rare systemic side effects, again, because there's such a small amount that actually gets into the blood system. It's, it's quite unusual for someone to have systemic side effects, uh, but when they do have them, they tend to be kind of flu-like symptoms. So headache, backache, chest pain, yeah, cold symptoms. What else? I, I think that's a pretty good overview of this important class of medications. Uh, it's very likely that if you have glaucoma, you will be prescribed this class of medications. Uh, given how effective they are, the fact that there is an affordable generic available, uh, how easy they are to take, and uh, given that there are very few and unlikely systemic side effects, uh, as well as the fact that most of the cosmetic side effects are tolerable, at least with the lash growth, uh, even desirable for some who are taking this medication. All right, well, I hope you found this helpful, and um, I will look forward to discussing more topics that there's not enough time to discuss in the exam room on another video.